Now to a look at the race to be Burlington's next mayor. With public safety, housing, and affordability on minds across the city, the race is expected to generate a lot of voter participation, so the front runners are working to earn support. The major party candidates are Democrat Joan Shannon, a longtime Burlington City Councilor and former City Council President, and Progressive Emma Mulvaney Stanek, a current state representative and former City Councilor. Shannon and Mulvaney Stanek took part in a candidate forum Thursday night at the Vermont Law and Graduate School's Burlington location, where public safety, housing, and treatment for substance use disorder were common themes of the discussion. I have a fresh perspective. I have new ideas and new energy that Burlington needs. I understand how to solve complex problems. I know how to dialogue with the community, especially people who do not necessarily agree with me. This is a much needed change from the last 12 years. I ask for your vote as mayor if you share my vision to improve public safety by rebuilding our police department, diversifying safety services, and partnering with others to provide the needed social safety net to meet community health, mental health, housing, and treatment needs. Now, either Mulvaney Stanek or Shannon would be Burlington's first ever woman to serve as mayor. The Barbara Lee Family Foundation researches female candidates and obstacles they face running for office. Its executive director says when women reach those high levels of executive leadership for the first time, it helps break down what's known as the imagination barrier. Researchers say voters still tend to think of white men when they picture holders of major offices. Gender is certainly not the focus of the race, but it's frankly about time that Burlington elect a woman mayor. And when you look around to your neighbors, New Hampshire has Joyce Craig as the mayor of Manchester in Boston. They have Michelle Wu and there's a number of other women mayors in Massachusetts. So electing a woman mayor, she would be in good company in New England close by. And it would be part of a trend in Vermont to finally start electing women to positions of power. There are two men on the ballot as well, both running as independents. One of them is Will Emmons. He ran for Burlington mayor back in 2021, earning less than 1% of the vote in a crowded field. But this time, he believes he'll have a stronger showing, telling NBC5 in depth he's focusing on key issues he identified through a series of interviews with community members, from New Americans to students to unhoused Vermonters. Those issues include opposing supervised drug injection sites, improving infrastructure, and attracting businesses downtown. He's also calling for a community-wide focus on increasing the city's high school graduation rate. Teachers need support. I think that the students need support. I think if we were running Burlington um, as a well-oiled machine, I believe that we could be pushing out uh, uh, engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, uh, you know, uh, and also trade, trade, tradesmen, uh, carpenters, pipe fitters, plumbers, uh, and people that uh, generally want to, uh, you know, learn how to uh, install fiber optics and, uh, and then, you know, again, infrastructure. I mean, we need workers for that, so. Indeed. You mentioned those interviews you're doing. A recent interview you conducted was with a member of the unhoused community. Yes. What did you learn from that conversation with that gentleman that maybe opened your eyes about some of the messages you're talking about on the campaign trail? Yes, and I think that that's probably a good time for us to show uh, a picture of something that we're not really hearing too much about, and that is the Manhattan Drive uh, homeless encampment. Um, now, if you look really closely at that picture, you'll see that this is this is on public property uh, where where families would be taking their kids for or their dog for a walk and. You know, um, one of the things that I discussed uh, with, the, with the homeless gentleman was, uh, you know, how's your living situation? Uh, has any other candidate came down to speak to you? And, you know, you, did you know you're one of the largest conversations in this debate? And, I'm, of course, I believe that um, uh, education should be the largest conversation in this debate. Um, but but, uh, but it, is, it is very heavily talked about, and I believe it's a, it's a heavy exploitation. I believe we're luring people in from across the country. Uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, with, with the advertisement of a billboard that we will house you here. And I think it's, it's making people a little bit too comfortable. I believe that we should be encouraging businesses to stay. I mean, businesses are leaving on a daily basis because of this, and taxpayers are leaving as well. And, uh, you know, um, I think that uh, it's important for people to know 
that, uh, that I want Burlington to survive. I want homeless people to have jobs. I want uh, uh, all those things. And, and I think, uh, you know, uh, proper leadership is where you start. You've been walking the streets of Burlington, leafleting, meeting Correct. voters. What do you hear about the people's top concerns. You've mentioned yeah. yours. What are you hearing from well, voters? I think all the things I just mentioned to you were, are the people's top concerns. None of them are my concerns. I, I must have spoke to 3,000 people before I put a flyer together and designed a website uh, with, with, with concerns. Uh, and uh, you know, um, people's top concerns are infrastructure, public safety, education. Uh, those are the things that we need to be focusing on. And, uh, you know, I think we win as a team, we lose as a team. Uh, it's a very important thing that the uh, gentleman from the Somali Bantu uh, um, community told me. Uh, you know, um, we, we have gotten away from, uh, you know, um, trying to, to, to preach uh, practice and, and perseverance to our children. And we have uh, gone on to more of, 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 uh, of empathizing for something that's going on on the other side of the country. Now, we're insulated by seven booming towns who on a daily basis are picking up businesses that leave um, this city and taxpayers that leave this city. So that's our tax base, which will now be encompassed on your, your, your remaining uh, residents' shoulders. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it's important to note that uh, we don't have a tax base. We're not going to be able to save the world. So I want, um, to, I want to, to, to involve myself and others in concerns that, that maybe reach beyond our borders. But when we're surrounded by seven booming towns, this is a local issue. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's being, it's being propagandized and it's being perpetrated uh, by some of the very people that are pretending to stop it. What is your plan for public safety? Uh, 112 police officers, that's two and a half officers per thousand citizens. Uh, police officers take an oath, they go through police academy, they have a very tough job. I am not trying to reinvent the wheel. I believe that uh, when our streets are safe, uh, uh, students will be able to walk to school safely. Uh, our graduation rate will also increase, but also that's going to take attention on the, on the education system as well and support. Uh, but I believe public safety is a, is a good measure for a 9-year-old or an 11-year-old or a 12, 13, 14-year-old to walk to school and not have to see somebody overdosing and foaming out the mouth. Uh, I'm also the only candidate in this race calling for the defunding of vagrant housing initiatives because I believe we need to start focusing on those three main things, public safety, infrastructure, and education. And I'm also the only candidate in this race calling uh, for no on public injection sites because I believe that is also aiding to solicit people from across the country uh, and bringing more drug addiction to our community when we need to be focusing on making sure that the youth are able to uh, provide in the future. Typically, independents run as independents because they are dissatisfied with what they're seeing from the major party mm -hmm. candidates. Does that describe you and why you're running? No, I, 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 I think that I see Burlington being a powerhouse in the state of Vermont. I think that Burlington, uh, it, well, it's an hour south of Montreal. We have a lot of Canadian uh, patrons. I believe bringing businesses and encouraging businesses through incentives, uh, you know, for businesses that just left, uh, if you feel like you've been wronged by the city, because for instance, $3,500 Church Street businesses pay for a sidewalk fee to have seat people outside, but they can't sit people outside. And that's taxation without representation. So um, I believe that if a, if, a, if a business just left Burlington, maybe offer them an incentive to come back because what we're doing through this exploitation of drawing people in from across the country, um, which is actually driving businesses and taxpayers away, is, uh, is, is it's a poor financial practice. And I don't mean poor people. I mean, I mean it's a bad financial practice um, that's actually driving away business. So um, an incentive to stay uh, or, or return would certainly be good on the mom and pop small businesses, um, something that whether you're a progressive, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, your leadership uh, and not the voter, but the leadership is supposed to be supporting working people, uh, retirees, children, students, veterans, uh, you know, um, the people that built this community fabric. And, uh, and, and I see us getting away from that. And uh, when, you know, one thing you got to ask yourself is, OK, so my candidate has 70 and 140 thousand dollars in donations. I would ask um, the viewers to ask that candidate, who do you owe? because I have $642 in donations. I know exactly who I owe when I get elected, and that would be the voter. Um, if your candidate has all those uh, donations, I, I would think that it's rhetorical that they actually owe somebody else, and, and we could continue that downward spiral that we're in right now. The candidates would say that donations are a measure of support. Uh, conventional wisdom would probably have 
Emma Mulvaney Stanek or Joan Shannon as our next mayor based on their institutional experience in City Hall. Why is conventional wisdom not right? Why do you think that people should vote for Will Emmons? I believe that at this point in time, uh, solutions such as posting banners on light poles with uh, veterans and the sacrifices that deceased veterans made on behalf of this um, state and city, such as Whitehall, New York, uh, gives the impression and the appearance of a city. Those little steps are, uh, are, are important to, to, to building back uh, what we once had because we did have a thriving city. And uh, this city is, is a very artsy city. Um, I believe that the current business practices are driving away small businesses. And I think that uh, we're supposed to be supporting them. So, uh, you know, it's important for me uh, to note that, you know, the, the average Burlington resident that started a business here is supposed to be the ones receiving support, uh, you know, not, not driving them away to get swallowed up by something larger um, um, under the uh, guise of, you know, we have to empathize with something other than the students in our schools. I, mean, I really think that uh, when you bring businesses back, that's going to help to alleviate homelessness as well and uh, raise wages because one of the main concerns of waiters, waitresses, baristas, and et cetera, um, on Church Street and elsewhere in this city is my tips are down and my rent is up. Uh, so how do we resolve that? I think leadership is, is the number one. Will Lemons, good luck to you on Town Meeting Day. Thank you very much. The other man on Burlington ballots is Chris Hasley, a former school commissioner and current member of the Church Street Marketplace Commission. He declined NBC5's invitation to appear on this episode of In Depth, but he took part in the forum at Vermont Law and Graduate School, saying this is a moment for voters to move the city forward and do great things for Burlington, including creating an atmosphere where everyone feels safe. I'm sick and tired of hearing about all of Burlington's problems and how the city is in decline. We have the power to change that, each and every one of us. One election, one vote at a time, because in the end, Burlington wins with people, not with politicians. Next week, right here on NBC5 In-Depth, more conversations with the candidates. Emma Mulvaney Stanek and Joan Shannon are our guests here in the studio in the final leg of their mayoral campaigns.